Hi, I'm Greg Scott, author of Bullseye Breach, an IT security educational book disguised as a thriller about how Russian criminals invade the IT network of fictional retailer Bullseye Stores and steal 40 million customer credit card numbers right under the noses of people who should have known better. When you see acronyms like IOT and DDoS in the same sentence as the word drone, it probably brings up images of a 1950s science fiction B-movie. But once you finish this mini-seminar, you'll realize this stuff is right in your 21st century living room right now. IOT, or the Internet of Things, is shorthand for a new generation of connected products. Think about thermostats, baby monitors, security cameras, kitchen appliances, door locks, you name it. All kinds of stuff you can control from your cell phone. I even saw an article about a smart hairbrush that figures out things about your hair and interfaces with a cell phone app. <laughs> Find a picture of me on the internet and you'll see why the hairbrush app doesn't do me much good. And this is what a DDoS or distributed denial of service attack looks like. It's when a bunch of systems across the internet team up and pour packets at you faster than you can handle them. Are you a Star Trek fan? I'm talking about the original Star Trek here. Remember the episode where dozens of androids who look like Harry Mudd's ex-wife all shout at him at once and he can't get a word in edgewise? That's what a DDoS attack is like. You're Harry Mudd and all of Harry's ex-wives are shouting at you all at the same time. You're in the middle of a telecom shout fest and there's nothing you can do to make it stop. Except it isn't dozens of systems shouting at you, it's probably thousands. DDoS attacks are not as old as the original Star Trek, but maybe as old as Deep Space Nine. They've been around since at least the mid-90s. In 2000, I was part of a DDoS attack against the country of Brazil. Somebody turned one of my systems into a drone. I was unhappy. I've written blog posts about that incident and the FBI reaction. When I was putting this mini-seminar together, I found a presentation from 2003 about the history of DDoS attacks and the 2000 Brazil attack was in it, which did my ego some good. That attack sparked my interest in security, so blame somebody who was mad at Brazil at the turn of the century for the mini-seminar you're watching right now. You may have heard about a 2016 attack that took down a chunk of the internet for a few hours. Drones again. The idea is to compromise thousands of systems and turn them into drones to do the bidding of an anonymous master. See my mini seminar about phishing scams. That's phishing with a PH for how crooks turn your systems into drones. In a DDoS attack, somebody commands all those systems to pour traffic into the victim, overpowering the victim and knocking the victim offline. Does anyone still think lonely teenagers orchestrate all this stuff from their bedrooms? Or maybe some computer genius operating out of an undisclosed location. In an earlier version of this mini-seminar, I suggested our main enemy today is organized crime in hostile countries. And it's true, we are up against an entire value chain and a whole underground economy, and there's plenty of nation states with cyber warfare divisions these days. But independents like these guys also pack a powerful punch. If you want to be an extortionist, first do some homework and figure out how to compromise a vulnerable device. Then launch a few simple probes across the internet looking for more. Before long, you've got yourself a botnet you can unload against any victim. Or you can rent it to somebody else who can unload it against their victim. And right about here is when people start to object. So what? I'm not an international spy. I just want to shop online and do email. Usually followed closely by, none of this applies to me. I'm not technical. I don't have anything on the internet anybody cares about. Oh yes you do. If you don't remember anything else from this mini-seminar, remember this. You are connected to everyone else on the planet over the internet, and there are people who want to use your internet-connected devices to attack somebody else. Think about, say, a surgeon operating on somebody and collaborating over the internet. Suddenly the communication goes dark. How would you like it if you find out you're part of that attack? Does that sound too far-fetched, too science fiction-like? Well, think about this one. 
Think about a live stream of, say, the Super Bowl, and suddenly that goes dark, say, right in the middle of the halftime show. And you're part of the attack. You helped cause millions of people to miss the halftime wardrobe malfunction. You want that on your conscience? This stuff is not only in high-profile internet destinations, it's everywhere, including your living room and your bedroom. Here's just a few related articles. In early 2017, the United States Federal Trade Commission is suing D-Link for making shoddy security cameras and internet routers. D-Link is a company that makes that stuff in your home. Here's another article about a record-breaking DDoS attack in the fall of 2016 from millions of compromised security cameras. And they were not all from D-Link. And an article about Wi-Fi pillows and hairbrushes from the 2017 Consumer Electronics Store. Imagine millions of high-tech pillows and hairbrushes attacking NASA someday. This is the fallacy most people fall for, but you won't. Most people turn off when they hear this stuff because they don't see any way they could become the victim. And they're probably right. The odds are pretty good. They'll never be a DDoS victim. The attackers care about you in a different way. They don't want to attack you head on. They want to use you to attack somebody else. Your mission, whether or not you choose to accept it, is to make sure this does not happen to you. You're connecting to the internet. Time to take some responsibility. Don't expect the government to do it for you, especially after what we saw in the recent 2016 election cycle. But even if our political leaders were competent, which they're not, they're not in a position to stop attacks coming from your bedroom. You are. So don't hide behind ignorance. Bad guys prey on ignorant people. So what can you do about all this? If you find yourself a DDoS victim, congratulations, you are somebody. That's the good news. The bad news is, by yourself, there's nothing you can do about a well-crafted DDoS attack aimed at you. The first thing you do is pick up a phone and call your upstream telecom provider, unless they called you first. By the way, don't try to email your telecom contacts, because outbound email probably won't get outside your walls, and inbound email will never come in. So take satisfaction that somebody cares enough about you to keep this barrage up, and then start making real old-fashioned phone calls. This is one of those times when a little prevention is worth a whole bunch of cure. When you first set up your home or business, ask a few smart questions. If I can access this baby monitor, thermostat, security camera, door lock, you name it, if I can access this thing from my cell phone, what stops somebody else from accessing it with their cell phones? And if somebody discovers a bug in my device that makes it vulnerable to attack, what's the process to update it? And a hint, automatic updates from the vendor is the wrong answer. You need to be in control. What's to stop somebody from impersonating that vendor and applying a bogus update? See my many seminar about trust for details on that. And when you call for help, what's the native language of the people on the other end of the phone? The last thing you need is a language barrier during a crisis. Check the average on hold time, too. That's another good thing to think about. Only spend your money when you get solid answers to those questions. Put all those devices behind a credible firewall. At minimum, it should have settings to log traffic in and out, it should have a way for you to see data rates in and out, and it should have some diagnostic troubleshooting tools. Your firewall probably needs an upgrade to handle all those IoT devices. And so do you. Upgrade your knowledge. Now that you've invested a few minutes in this mini-seminar, I'm not going to hear a horror story about you in tomorrow's news, right? Don't be the ignorant parent who lets somebody compromise a baby monitor to kidnap your new baby and hold it for ransom. And now that you know about the dangers out there, share it with other people. That's the philosophy you should adopt. It's easy to remember. It even rhymes. Care and share to be prepared. Care enough about this stuff to educate yourself. Don't be ignorant. There's consequences to being ignorant. And share what you learn and expect other people to share what they learn with you. Use your brain. Don't be a mindless drone. 
I need to leave you with one final warning. Buy your copy of Bullseye Breach today, but don't start reading until a Friday afternoon, because once you start, you won't be able to put it down, and this gives you the whole weekend to recover from jet lag after you're up all night Friday night reading. And if you like what you read, please leave a nice review on Amazon and all the other online review sites. Authors use these reviews to build credibility so we can keep writing. And thanks for putting up with my amateur narration.